over the course of the last year and a half, we presented evidence in 10 public hearings, testimony from our brave law enforcement officers, senior White House, and campaign officials, and many others. Today, we are prepared to share our found findings with you. But before we do so, it's important to remember what we've learned and critically exactly what happened at the United States Capitol on January 6th. Without objection, I include in the record a video presentation of some of the key evidence our investigation has uncovered. There were officers on the ground. They were bleeding. They were throwing up. I, I mean, I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. As I was swarmed by a violent mob, they ripped off my badge. They grabbed and stripped me of my radio. They seized ammunition that was secured to my body. They began to beat me with their fists and with what felt like hard metal objects. The key thing to do is to claim victory. No, we won. Fuck you. Sorry, over. We won. Yeah. You're wrong. Fuck you. Right out of the box on election night, the president uh, claimed that there was major fraud underway. I mean, this happened, as far as I could tell, before there was actually any potential of looking at evidence. I didn't think what was happening was necessarily honest or professional at that point in time. So yeah. that led to me stepping away. Generally discussed on that topic was whether the fraud, maladministration, abuse, or irregularities, uh, if aggregated and read most favorably to the campaign, would that be outcome determinative? And um, I think everyone's assessment in the room, at least amongst the staff, Mark Short, myself, and Greg Jacob, was that it was not sufficient to be outcome determinative. I told him that I did believe, yes, that once the, those legal processes were run, uh, if fraud had not been established, that had affected the outcome of the election, then unfortunately, I believe that what had to be done was concede the outcome. What were the chances of President Trump winning the election? After that point? Yes. None. So what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes, fellas. I need 11,000 votes. Give me a break. The numbers are the numbers. The numbers don't lie. We had many allegations, and we investigated every single one of them. Did uh, one of them uh, make a comment that uh, they didn't have evidence, but they had a lot of theories? That was Mr. Giuliani. And, and what exactly did he say, and how that come up? My recollection, he said, we've got lots of theories, we just don't have the evidence. You're asking me to do something that's never been done in history, the history of the United States. And I'm going to put my state through that without sufficient proof. It's a tape earlier in the day of Ruby Freeman and Shay Freeman Moss and one other gentleman quite obviously surreptitiously passing around USB ports as if they're vials of heroin or cocaine. In one of the videos we just watched, Mr. Giuliani accused you and your mother of passing some sort of USB drive to each other. Uh, what was your mom actually handing you on that video? A ginger mint. Do you know how it feels to have the president of the United States to target you? The president of the United States is supposed to represent every American not to target one. I made it clear I did not agree with the idea of saying the election was stolen and putting out this stuff, which I told the president was bullshit. He wanted to talk about that he thought the, uh, the election had been uh, stolen or, or was corrupt and that there was widespread fraud. And I had told him that uh, our reviews had not shown that to be the case. And I said something to the effect of, sir, we've done dozens of investigations, hundreds of interviews, 
The major allegations are not supported by the evidence developed. Well, my first thought was, where is the, this is a, a terrible idea. Jeff Clark cannot be installed as acting attorney general of the United States. You ultimately told us that you described uh, this meeting as a, or, or the, uh, not this meeting, the Georgia letter that was proposed as a, an effing murder-suicide pact. Do you remember using the term murder-suicide pact? Yes. Was it your impression that the vice president had directly conveyed his position on these issues to the president, not just to the world through a dear colleague letter, but directly to President Trump? Many times. My view is that the vice president had, didn't have the legal authority to do anything except what he did. And I said, hold on a second, I want to understand what you're saying. You're saying that you believe the vice president acting as president of the Senate can be the sole decision maker as to, under your theory, who becomes the next president of the United States? And you said, yes. And I said, are you out of your effing mind? The president was, you know, all the attention was on uh, what Mike would do or what Mike wouldn't do. There's a telephone conversation between the president and the vice president, is that correct? Yes. The conversation was, was pretty heated. Apologize for being impolite, but do you rem remember what she said? Her father called him the P word. Bring it up, bring it up. It was clear that it was escalating and escalating quickly. So then, when that tweet, the Mike Pence tweet, um, was sent out, um, I remember us saying that that was the last thing that needed to be tweeted at that moment. It felt like he was pouring gasoline on the fire by tweeting that. I've gained access to the second floor, and I've got public about five feet from me down here below. They're talking. They are on the second floor, moving in now. We may want to consider getting out and leaving now. Copy. Uh, members of the BPT tell at this time were starting to fear for their own lives. There were calls to um, say goodbye to family members, so on and so forth. Approximately 40 feet. That's all there was. 40 feet between the vice president and the mob. Donald Trump and his allies and supporters are a clear and present danger to American democracy. We got derogatory information from OSINT suggesting that uh, some very, very violent individuals uh, were organizing uh, to come to D.C. As Mr. Giuliani and I were walking to his vehicles that evening, he looked at me and said something to the effect of, Cass, are you excited for the 6th? It's going to be a great day. I remember looking at him and saying, Rudy, could you explain what's, what's happening on the 6th? Uh, he, he had responded something to the effect of, we're going to the Capitol. It's going to be great. The president's going to be there. He's going to look powerful. <laughs> He personally asked for us to come to D.C. that day. And I thought, for everything he's done for us, if this is the only thing he's going to ask of me, I'll do it. Uh, well, basically, uh, you know, the president, you know, got everybody riled up, told everybody to head on down. So we basically were just following what he said. Within 15 minutes of leaving the stage, President Trump knew that the Capitol was besieged and under attack. So are you aware of any phone call by the President of the United States to the Secretary of Defense that day? Not that I'm aware of, no. Are you aware of any phone call by the President of the United States to the Attorney General of the United States that day? No. Are you aware of any phone call by the President of the United States to the Secretary of Homeland Security that day? I, I'm not aware of that, no. Did you ever hear the vice president, or excuse me, the president no. ask for the National no. Guard? Did you ever hear the president ask for law enforcement response? No. You got an assault going on on the capital of the United States of America. And there's nothing. No call, nothing, zero. I remember Pat saying something to the effect of, 
Mark, we need to do something more. They're literally calling for the vice president to be effing hung. And Mark had responded something to the effect of, you heard him, Pat. He thinks Mike deserves it. He doesn't think they're doing anything wrong. You on the staff did not want people to leave the Capitol. On the staff? I, In I, the White House. I, 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 I can't think of anybody, you know, on that day who did want people to get out of the the Capitol once the, you know, particularly once the violence started. No. I mean, it, What about the president? Yeah. Well, she said the staff. So I answered. No, I said in the White House. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I thought you said who, who else on the staff? Okay. Um, yeah. I, I, I'm, I can't reveal communications, but obviously I think, you know, I said, good, John. Now I'm going to give you the best free legal advice you're ever getting in your life. Get a great effing criminal defense lawyer. You're going to need it. General Flynn, do you believe in the peaceful transition of power in the United States of America? Let's go. Officer, unconscious. Uh, the what I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over. Okay.